hello there well it's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Me and today um, I'm making a cushion and I've started cutting it out of one of the Scotty dogs of course I'm making it in tartan and I am going to rim around the outside with a layer of fur I've got some buttons for the eyes and I've got some purple for the collar purple tartan so yes let's get on really uh, I must admit I did do this freehand this drawing of the dog and um, I'm sure there's an easier way I'm sure you can enlarge it and um, yes and even if I scanned it into the computer it's probably too big to um, cut it out to scale so I know you'll have to be clever to get the pattern and I know I could work out how to do PDFs if I just sat down and did them. Then, um, <clears throat> you know, such is life. Such is life, I'm afraid. But I will endeavour. I will learn how to use the computer. So I've got four of these because I'm going to make two cushions. So I'll just get rid of two. Of the, well, I'll get rid of all but one. I can put that out of the way. I've got my sewing machine all set up. Now the nice thing about this fabric is it's the same on both sides. If not, then, well, we just have to concentrate. Now the strip of fur is pieces sewn together. And, um, yes, hopefully I have enough. Now, I'm not 100% sure if I should put the collar on now or I should put the collar on at the end so I think I'll put it on at the end and all I'm going to do is literally line this strip over one sheet of the actual tartan and then sew round now I know that sounds like I'm cheating a bit because um, I could fold it and sew it all in one go but I'm making it as easy as possible for myself. So I'm going to do it in two stages. Now when I come to a corner, I always find leaving the needle down and then turning the fabric. So I'll turn the base and then I'll just squeeze this fabric round. Now I did give myself a hem allowance when I cut out the cushions as well. So, you know, it's worth bearing in mind. Now I'm at the point of the tail and I'm moving round the doggy so that I can I can see it and it lies flat. Okay. Now I suppose the tail is the difficult bit, you know? The pointy bits are the difficult bit. Now whilst I'm sewing, I'm making sure that I'm not picking anything up at the back and this time round it's quite easy because I've got the fur going outwards. Now to sew fake fur it's always a good idea to use a ballpoint needle and the ballpoint it pushes the the fabric away from the hole rather than trying to pierce the fabric so it's you know the right equipment and this is really quite an easy sew and as you can see I'm getting to the feet now now I might regret it but I made it a bit overly complicated because I gave the little chap toes so again I have to sort of concentrate on the going round. And on this side, I don't have to worry about making a hole to turn it inside out. But on my second time round, I will really have to make sure that there's a point where I can turn it round the other way. As I said before, I've used strips of fabric and I really don't think that it'll affect the overall look of 
the cushion in the end. Um, one thing I would say is that you don't have to use fur. It's just that I am using the fur. But I'm, I just think it would be a nice overall effect. But you could use any fabric. You could use matching or contrasting or anything you like, really. And um, I've gone for sort of two and a half inch strips, maybe three inch. I just think that any smaller than that would be quite hard to work with. Okay, so I'm going to switch the camera off and then I'm going to come back to you when I'm sewing the second row round. So when I'm sewing the next body on. All right. Hi, so welcome back. So I'm getting there. I have um, sewn the second half nearly on. Um, one thing I'd like to say before I go much further. Now I used two pieces of a three paper sellotape together to do the overall pattern and when I cut out the first strip I did cut out a hundred inches well 104 because I used what I got and then I sewed it into strips now I know all I've got left out of that hundred centimeters is this it's probably not even a yard so, because I thought, well, I'll sew it all together and then I'll work out how much more I've got to get to do the second cushion, because I always plan to do two. Um, I know, I, I am quite amazed at actually how much fabric it took. So, whilst, whilst I've been chatting, what I'm doing is I'm going round and I'm sewing a few inches and then I'm pushing all the fluff inside. This is just to save the job for later because otherwise I, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose all my fluffy bits. And um, the second one it is easier in a way because I'm not stretching the fabric around the fur but I am I am able to sort of move the fabric around the fur so it makes life a lot easier. I'm just coming up to a corner now, so I've lifted my foot again, and I've just eased the fabric around. And what I plan to do, or what I always do with jobs like this, is I, after I've sewn it, I will then turn it over, and I will check that I haven't come off in places. And rather than even worrying about it, I will just accept it. I, you know, I will accept that I've come off on maybe two occasions. Um, the difference is I can actually hear that the sewing machine is sewing the fur fabric, although it could quite easily be sewing the fluff, yeah? So, you know, it is just worthwhile sort of knowing that. And, um, yeah... I have to remember to stop to, to make a hole so that I can um, re-stuff it um, and then I can um, move on. So let's see how we're doing. It's grand. So I'm going to turn it now inside out. And I find it easier to do this now rather than later is I'm going to sew the buttons on for the eyes and um, yeah so let's have a look to see what he looks like so there's the top of his head with the ears and um, there's the main body so he is getting there he will look a bit more apt when he's got some stuffing in him and um, I just push out these corners because yeah such is life such is life okay so let's get the button sewn on now I did thread a needle off screen just to make life a little bit easier for myself I do tend to get in a state when I know the camera's on and um, then I can't do anything so Yes, but that's that's a personal sort of problem, as it were. That's um, nothing.
nothing to worry about. So let's get that needle, line it up. Now I think in a way, um, actually sewing the eyes in the right place is probably the hardest part of this make because it is just very important. You know, you're, you know as a human we, um, we naturally home in on the eyes of any animal. So if they're not in the right place then you know it, we show concern and um, I suppose as a prey animal as well you go kind of go okay the eyes are too close together so yes you know do take some time just to sort of work this out in your own way and for stuffing I'm using a pillow stuffing you can use toy stuffing it's um yeah it's got a nice sort of bounce to it so it, it's kind of good in that sense but um, if it's good enough for your head to use then I think it's good enough for a cushion it's much more widely available and obviously an awful lot cheaper because of that um, yeah but you know all right I've got my needle out there out of the way and I'm just going to grab my stuffing and give it a go now it's always the case with me as so I hope I've got enough stuffing because uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> make life a lot easier okay so now is a good point just to make sure that the whiskers are all pointed out and the ears are all pointed out and the nose is all stuffed properly so you know give it a good push if you want to use something like a knitting needle or a pen or something just to push him down into the corners so that it's got a nice bounce to him you know you don't want to stuff him overly but you do want to push out all these lovely corners and if we've taken the time to sew the toes in then uh, obviously we may need to make use of the fact that we've done that so we're just pushing a toe out with my finger there and a bit more stuffing now I had decided to put the collar on when I um, did the sewing uh, sewed it up so you know another toe there let's have a look at your chat move that out there I've managed to get it slightly twisted what I'm going to do is place the collar on now and the reason I decided to put the collar on at the end was just so that I could get it level. Um, I thought it would it would look a bit funny if it was slightly wonky and um, so yeah I thought well you know I've got a I've got to hand stitch it anyway so yeah, I'm just untucking the fur there. I suppose that's what's going on in my little head. I'm going, it looks more like a pony. But um, yes, obviously it doesn't. <laughs> just got ponies on the brain. So I've got my needle here and all we need to do is put the knot on the inside of the thread so we can um, so we don't see it and then take the edge of the fur so I'm going to hide the knot underneath and then I'm just going to secure it with a couple of stitches and again, I'm going to try and make sure that I don't have too much of this fur caught up in it. Because it, it literally is a waste. Um, 
and then I can literally slide my needle along that seam there and push it through so that the stitches are, very, are, are pretty much invisible. So. Now it's really up to you whether you stitch the collar into the seam or if we stitch the collar just around the outside. Now I'm pretty much along the lines of having it loose and stitched around the outside but it really is, it's up to you because it's not going to look balanced because it's... Um, If it's if it's sewn into one seam and not the other so and I think you know unless we're going to go for a collar with a buckle or anything then we will need <coughs> to have it loose so let's get that there and I'm just going to fold in the two raw edges I haven't done anything special when I've sewn this collar all I've done is a uh, a stitch along the side so there we go and then I can slide my needle along the stitches and then bring it out and then do a tiny little stitch and slide it along and that will keep it nice and invisible Need our scissors. <laughs> there we are. So it does help to keep it all in place as well so that he's got a nice blunt nose and um, and he's nice and fluffy. Oh I never popped his tail, did I? Yes, because he's got a little tail. So there we go, a little Scotty dog, ready to celebrate all things Scottish. Alright, thank you ever so much for watching, my name's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee.